There's something about watching a mobile mosh pit worth of undead, guilt-free targets lurch towards you as if they're actually right in front of you that gets the blood flowing. That's why zombie games work so well in VR. At first, there's the overconfident feeling that this is no big deal, they're slow, and you have guns. But as you start to whittle away at the crowd, the picture becomes much less rosy. They're a lot closer, and you have a lot less ammo. Panic sets in and mistakes happen as you fumble to reload your weapons with ghouls looming in your face. Arizona Sunshine 2 does a great job of putting you in that position and making you struggle to survive. And while it doesn't do a whole lot other than that, which makes it a tad repetitive, it does make a respectable run at turning the first game's nameless, one-liner machine of a protagonist into a character with depth, with a little help from his buddy. The story campaign, which can be played solo or in two-player co-op, is a straightforward linear shooter that alternates between about 75% all-out action, in which you joyfully reduce throngs of zombies to extremely chunky soup before they can do the same to you, and 25% slower but still tense exploration and puzzle solving, where you're collecting weapon after weapon to more effectively puree zombies in your next encounter. It's well-paced, though that can only go so far when you're talking about a campaign that lasts for more than 15 hours. I can't say it stays completely fresh when it never really introduces any new enemies that aren't some variant of zombie that moves faster and or is vulnerable to something other than headshots. At the same time, they wouldn't still be making zombie games at this point if mowing them down ever truly got old, would they? And with headshot kills this satisfying, it never really gets dull even though it does run dry of surprises. You've gotta love that sound effect. And those ragdoll physics are pretty hilarious, especially when they're glitching. When I have my aim dialed in and knock out five or six headshots without reloading, it always feels great. On that note, aside from the massive graphical upgrade over the original Arizona Sunshine, as you'd expect, it has been seven years, the biggest change that struck me immediately was the complexity of reloading. You have to eject the magazine, grab a fresh one with the other hand, jam it in, and then chamber around before you can start firing. Unless, that is, you're counting your shots. Leave one round in the chamber and you can swap magazines without that admittedly cool looking last step that can cost you a precious second when every single one counts. You can hold three guns at any given time, and having so many options is a treat. I started out preferring the 9mm pea shooters and taking my time to line up headshot after headshot, but gradually I gravitated toward the six shot revolver that can take down any normal zombie with two hits to center mass. There's everything from Uzis to combat shotguns and light machine guns, each with their own unique reloading sequence. They all look great too, with the exception of the pretty ugly flamethrower effect. Burn, baby, burn! Arizona Sunshine 2 is not exactly going for realism at the cost of fun though. Dropping a gun from your hand teleports it to your holster, so if you're holding two pistols and one runs dry, you can simply let go of the other one, use that hand to reload, and then draw your second pistol again. I can only assume this is achieved using powerful magnets, and it's a huge convenience. For sure though, it's notoriously easy to mess up and pick up the wrong thing when you're trying to grasp at objects that aren't really there. And it always feels bad to die because I accidentally grabbed a sausage instead of a magazine and frantically tried to jam it in my gun. But I do appreciate the ability to grab items from a few feet away so you don't have to bend down constantly, kind of like in Half-Life Alex, but with shorter range. That's great, because ammo is spread so liberally in this world that there must be a giant rabbit that poops it. All right, let's see what we got here. There are also melee weapons, and it's definitely fun to lodge them in zombies' faces for an up-close and personal splattering. Though if you're close enough to use them against enemies who are aware of you, you're probably getting munched on a bit in the process, and weapons break after splitting a few skulls. Arizona Sunshine 2 is much more about the guns. Your final combat tool is craftable grenades, molotovs, and mines, but you can only carry one in your inventory, so they're more of an occasional treat than a regular part of combat. That'll do it. Buddy, if you're not busy, I can use a hand with this one. The other big change is the presence of Buddy the dog. Yes, you can and should pet him. Feels good, don't it? He's also a game changer in two ways. One being that you can tell him to kill any normal zombie or temporarily pin down a big one. Get him, boy. Sometimes you don't even have to ask, he'll just tackle one right as you were lining up your shot. a boy. That's right, this is not an escort mission, and you don't have to be careful not to shoot Buddy or explode him with a grenade or Molotov cocktail. Like any true friend, Buddy doesn't care if you hurt him by accident. Did I mention that you can store two extra guns on his adorable combat vest? Cool, alright. My only real complaint about him is that his animations consistently glitch out when you tell him to maul a zombie that's lying on the ground. He just loves to wait for them to stand up so that he can take them right back down again. Stay close, buddy. I got you. On top of that, Buddy plays a big role in the story. Alright, we gotta find that biker bar. 
You all set, buddy? Which is about our desperately lonely character finally finding a friend other than Fred, his collective name for the zombies, as he tries to link up with other human survivors. Oh, this isn't gonna go well, is it? In the first game, Fred was the only quote-unquote person around to hear his endless stream of Army of Darkness-style quips as he bashed in heads and blew them off. Oh, cool. Morning, Freddy. But here he's talking to somebody who doesn't want to eat his face. Buddy, tell me you saw that headshot. It makes his stick much more tolerable, and even endearing at times, when it could have easily become tiresome. There's something really genuine about his affection for Buddy. I propose that you and I do a Freaky Friday body swap. I've got to say though, this story about loneliness doesn't really jive with the fact that you can play it in co-op. It is indisputably more fun to kill zombies with a friend covering you, of course. Buddy, we gotta go. Setting that aside, there are a handful of genuinely harrowing moments in which hordes of zombies chase you down. Those were the places where I died several times before figuring out the right moment to use a grenade or molotov to thin out their numbers, or when I was supposed to just run rather than fight. And there was one time when I had to turn the difficulty down a notch just to get through when I was playing solo. The main activity when you're not shooting or gathering loot is climbing, which is kind of silly in that you can grab onto handholds and pull yourself around so freely that it's like being in zero gravity. Watching a co-op partner do it is bonkers. But again, it's nice to have another thing to break up the shooting. Yes. This journey takes you across a pretty respectable assortment of locations, including the Arizona desert, which, as it turns out, is a much different place when there's less sunshine and you have to fight in the dark. Sewers, stores, a train yard, an airport, apartment complexes, and more create a decent sense of variety. I wouldn't say there's anything so memorable as shooting zombies in a carnival and Left 4 Dead, but Arizona Sunshine 2 does mix it up. So long, Freddy. It's kind of annoying you can't control when your flashlight turns on, though. Apart from the campaign, which took me about 17 hours, there's a single horde mode map at launch if you want to see how long you and up to three friends can hold out. It's simple yet challenging, but it does suffer from the usual problem of requiring experienced teams to start from a very slow wave one, and then work your way up to the onslaught. And it's kind of odd how it keeps you contained to a very small base area in the center with invisible walls. I also saw more hitching in this mode than I did elsewhere, where it was present but infrequent. Time and time again, Arizona Sunshine 2 expertly ramps up the pressure of oncoming hordes of zombies, and then rewards you with spectacular showers of gore when your bullets and hatches connect with rotten faces. Its VR shooting and relatively complex reloading procedures mean you always have to be on your toes thinking about how many bullets are left in your guns as you blast your way through a lengthy, occasionally poignant story about a man and his new four-legged best buddy. The variety of enemy types is pretty limited for a 15 plus hour game, but there's enough light puzzle solving and climbing mixed in to keep it moving along, and the physics glitches provide as much humor as the one-liners and co-op antics. For more zombies, check out our reviews of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 Zombies Mode and, why not, The Walking Dead Destinies. And for everything else, stick with IGN.